A sarcoid is a growth that often appears on um, usually horses, is what most people would know it as, but it can appear on cattle, and it can also appear on dogs, and it can also appear on cats, apparently. Um, anyway, the usual understanding of a sarcoid, if it is diagnosed as a sarcoid, is that it's uh, the bovine papillomavirus, and it causes a wart-like growth at odd places. The most common place is the neck, but it can appear anywhere, um, mouth, eye, coronet band, really annoying, that's where, where they are, but that's generally, that's generally where um, sarcoids appear. Well, they look a little bit like a cauliflower growth or a, or a warty growth. Sometimes they can be flat, so, so how, it depends on, that's why you need to get them diagnosed because often you'll get um, a non-obvious sarcoid that just looks like a bit like lumpy skin but there'll be no hair on it. They are often what's called an occult sarcoid, where the majority of the sarcoid growth is actually under the skin, and when you start treating them, they can come out and, and be quite, become quite nasty. Others are really obvious, they're like hard little nodules, and they look a little bit like a wart, so they're quite obvious. Um, other times they can get really, really nasty, like there was a, and they can actually the roots of them can grow and infiltrate other parts of the body. We had a, there's actually a great testimonial on the website on Bella. And when Bella's owners contacted me about that sarcoid, they were about to put the horse down because the sarcoid not only had it grown and they'd tried everything, um, but it, was, it had started to infiltrate the jawbone and it was really quite aggressive. And that story of, of that horse's treatment and how, how we manage that is quite remarkable. The horse is now absolutely 100% sarcoid free. Um, great testimonial to look at on the website. They'll occur in some horses, again, like a virus can you know, miss other people. So some horses might be naturally resilient. Um, other horses are more vulnerable. I mean, it's, you know, it's a fairly um, simple equation of, of the immune system. I think a lot of the reason why some horses seem to be more susceptible to them is because they've been, you know, the virus has been laying dormant for a long time in the system. I think there is, like warts, there is a transmissible factor there. So it is a virus, so it's transmissible between animals. I'm not sure if it's transmissible in the environment. I doubt very much it would be. I think it is a contact based one, but you know, I would have to be, I'd have to follow that up and check that. <clears throat> but generally speaking, um, I think that uh, most horses that, you know, show a propensity to that uh, definitely have had stress or trauma in their life and they're more than likely to, you know, exhibit it. The other thing that can cause it or make them more vulnerable is it happens at a site of an injury. So maybe they've got a cut on their foot and then somehow they picked up the virus in the environment. I'm not sure, again, about the exact transmission of, of how it occurs, but I do know that's, that can happen. If I'm going to give someone advice on how to treat um, sarcoids, because they are often not particularly successfully treated uh, with conventional methods, I normally do a 15 week course of um, a specific formula which is detoxifying and also antiviral. I have a topical treatment that I like to use and I also like to address diet. Like anything, we're boosting the immune system, we're trying to get the body to fight whatever it is that the body needs to fight in order to boost the immune system. Topical treatments can be quite helpful for sarcoids, but what you have to remember is that it is a virus and depending on how uh, deep the actual vi the sarcoid is in the body, and you might have multiple sites of sarcoids too. The sarcoid is an attempt to a certain extent of trying to encapsulate this material and sort of keep it contained. So the body is sort of already engaging its defences to a certain extent, but the problem is the virus mutates and enters other cells and of course the sarcoid grows because of that. Sometimes what happens when we uh, start to treat these things with herbs particularly and because we're using um, immune stimulating herbs the body sort of starts to kick into gear its defenses and the virus feels vulnerable so you might get a proliferation of the virus and that's actually quite normal it's actually part of the initial stage of treatment where I will expect it to get worse before it gets better you have to be aware that that doesn't happen in every case but if it is going to happen 
some people can go, oh my God, it's getting worse. Well, that might be the case, but usually by the end of the 15 weeks, we've got through that stage and you'll start to see things resolving. Not every sarcoid, I mean, I think it's around about 80% success rate we get with our, our um, general protocol. There is that 20% where we just can't, for some reason, you just can't get on top of it. You might be able to minimise it, you might get things, you know, looking a bit more contained, but they don't entirely disappear. Other difficult sites are coronet band, lower limb sarcoids. I find those incredibly hard to treat because of the location and constant reinfection because they keep getting you know, knocked or something like that happening. They are the hardest to treat, I, I feel. We have on the, on the website a program called the Sarcoid Program that does contain the combination of products that I like to recommend in the first instance. Sometimes in, in secondary infections, I'll also add the infector clear to that. Um, but what I would suggest you do is if you've got a sarcoid and you want to just get started and you, and you want to be as quick as possible, just purchasing that uh, particular initial program is a good idea. Just a, a little note of um, application, if you're using the ointment and the ointment is in a place where it could get rubbed, for example, between the, the cheeks of, um, of the hind legs where there's a friction motion, I don't recommend you use the ointment. I would need to, to make up an actual topical liquid, which we do have as well, and you can dilute that with colloidal silver and you can spray it on. Difficult to reach places again, the topical liquid is good diluted with colloidal silver and sprayed topically on those areas. But generally speaking, the ointment is good. The internal is obviously given as per direction. And I also recommend a dietary change. If your horse is having a high sugar diet or maybe even has metabolic problems, those horses are much harder to treat um, and we will need to sort of address diet with those horses. If you have a horse with a sarcoid and you'd like more information, please let me know. Um, I like to have a, a, an image. I like to know exactly what's happening with the horse's diet and, and what you've actually done so far to try and um, treat this particular condition. If you've got a question, there's a form below. Please use it and it is a free service and um, I'll help you.